Hello there, um, welcome back and we're going to be talking about objects today. So we just finished up, finished up arrays and we'll talk about this other data type called an object. It's really very useful and it's all over JavaScript, it's very pervasive. So we're going to be looking at what is an object, what it code can be used, what kind of thing you can do with it and a whole lot more. So let's jump right in and take a look. So here I have a table with some sample data. And what I want to do is pose this problem. Let's say you wanted to keep this information uh, about some friends and family or your members of yours in your program. And that's the requirement. That's what you want to do. Um, and so you could see I have here name, age, date of birth, and favorite food for some individuals. And you want to keep this in your program. Now, you could put this in an array. And you can imagine a, a names array that contains all the names, an age array that contains all the ages, and so on. But that would be kind of difficult to manipulate because if you want to print out information, say, with Clint, you'd have to go to index one of each and every single one of those different areas just to get information about Clint. On the other hand, you can imagine that each row, you know, which means uh, you know, Bob, his name, age, date of birth, and so on, each row uh, contains information for that user, and you could put that in an array. And that would work, too. Um, except you'd be using index to access the individual um, values of the array. And that's, that's fine. But you, know, you have to remember that index 0 means name, index 1 means age, and so on. What we really like is some way to change that and say, can we have the flexibility of, instead of me using an index, I could use some kind of value, like a string, for example. I can actually use the word name, or age, or date of birth, or something to that extent. And that is possible with objects. So if you can change things like we want, which instead of using an index, we could use any sort of value we want, we'll just change that instead of calling it an index, we'll call it a key. And again, the key points to the value. And so if we take this and we group these set of key value pairs, so each key and value we'll call a pair, because they always go together. If you group those together, now we have what is really an object. And so an object, using my layman term definition, is just a name given to a collection or set of key value, pair, key value pairs. And each one of those key value pairs, you might hear people call them a property. So you can say, I'm assigning to my object a property. Now, the property, of course, has to have a name, and the name being that key. And then once you ask for that particular property, you get the value, or you can assign a value to that particular property. Creating an object look pretty similar to um, creating an uh, array. Okay, so creating an object look very similar to creating an array. If you look at the top of the simple syntax, instead of using square brackets, you use those angle brackets. And instead of just having values, 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 comma, values, comma, values, now you have key, colon, value, and that says if I have key value pair, comma, and then another key value pair, and with the key values being separated or delimited by a uh, comma between the each key value and between the key and value, you have a, co a colon. Um, using the object is also pretty easy. It almost looks like there are two syntax possible. You can use the array type syntax with the index uh, operator by using the square bracket and then the key um, value, whatever you use it for the key. And then you can use the other way, which is a sort of shorthand, nice shorthand, is, you know, object that property. Now, the only thing to realize here is that since you can use anything for a key, including a string with spaces or even a date or another object or anything you want, really, um, it's best if you enclose those in the square bracket, um, as you could see from the example there. At some examples of using objects and so here um, going along with our little problem statement I'm gonna try and capture information related to some individuals and so I create a variable called Bob and I assign to it this object um, with these properties name age date of birth and favorite foods and you could see um, how I did that um, exactly like we specified the only thing here to note is that when using the date class to create a date value, um, when you're specifying the month, it's zero base. So 
Bob's birthday is 2013, January 23rd, but specifying January as a number, I don't use one. Instead, I have to use zero. The output is here at the bottom of this case. And so um, there's nothing fancy here. I took those um, four individuals and then stuck them in an array. Okay, so just showing again this idea that you could keep put arrays and arrays, object and arrays, arrays and object and object and objects and so on. Um, it, it's same thing. Um, all right, so um, that's one example. It's pretty straightforward. I did another example. Um, I don't want this video to be too long, and so. Um, this example just basically show how I use the same exact data. I didn't change anything in it at all. And I print out just the people's name and then um, the average age and then only the people who are um, older than 20. And you can kind of look at that. And it uses some of the idea that since I have an array, my data set here is an array, I use some of those functions we talked about for each um, reduce and in this one filter, which I didn't talk about. But all the documentation for the array and the reduce function, um, you know, the filter function um, is right here. And um, of course, for objects, you can see a documentation here and read and see examples of some of the methods. Though. I didn't really cover any methods, right? Um, the only thing that I wanted to call to your attention is that for the reduce method, I use um, a, in the initial value for, for produce, I provided zero only because of my example, I wanted to be able to um, here, um, calculate the sum of the ages. And if you read the documentation for reduce, if I didn't provide an initial value, the previous would be a person. And so if I add person previous that age plus current that age and return that, well, when I try to supply it again, it would not work because on the second call, that would be a number and I would be trying to access number that age which wouldn't exist. So by supplying zero, it caused my first um, person and I was able to use that first person plus zero. And so anyway, that makes sense. All right, um, and let me close off here. I don't want to spend too much time in the code. Um, just download it. It's in a repository, run it, see how it goes and try to understand it. If you have questions, let me know. So that does it for this video. Um, thanks for your time. I hope you learned something. Um, take care and happy coding. Um, bye.